so good morning all of you and today we are clubbed here to understand the actual uh, workout of gps and the mathematics behind it okay so uh, first of all let me ask you a few questions that uh, how you are using gps anyone from audience yes anyone from audience we all are using gps right so in our day to day life but uh, uh, i mean can you think about the G uh, the life without gps we can uh, try to locate something for example if some relative is uh, residing in some area or in some city where you are just moving to first time and at that time if you are having uh, a location or maybe a particular address then you are what you are doing you are just entering that into google maps right and then uh, from your current location you are getting some path okay and that path lead you to the final or uh, you can say a destination point your relatives home okay so uh, that is the thing that we are using here okay you can see here uh, one uh, small demonstration okay uh, if i am here at pandit dindal petroleum university and if i want to go to siusha university at main campus surendranagar then google is helping me here okay to track my path and uh, to accomplish my journey within the stipulated time period okay now uh, so how do we know this precise location okay basically there are only few things that we need to take into account and uh, just based upon that fundamental concept you will be able to understand that how it actually works okay uh, in today's lecture i i have kept in my mind that this should not be a boring lecture boring lecture in the sense that uh, yeah some of the speakers they know very well and uh, they are very eminent but when they start speaking at that time everything goes out of our mind okay it directly bounces because of uh, so many i mean lengthy expressions and a very uh, big theory that they are presuming that already we know and that is the thing that uh, some of the lectures uh, we cannot directly enjoy even though they are giving us a lot of stuff okay so today uh, we are going to use our fundamental knowledge to understand how this works and uh, basically my main uh, idea behind this is upon completion of lecture definitely you will be in a position to say to your friend that yes i know that how gps works okay so let's begin the first thing here is to go with latitudes and longitudes okay so in simple language latitudes are nothing but lines from left to right or you can say flatitude okay so it's a flat thing so uh, when you say about uh, you are you are talking about latitudes we will discuss this thing okay on our globe on our spherical structure of earth and the lines running up and down like this or uh, you will say that you are dealing with longitudes so basically these are latitudes and these are longitudes latitude runs from 0 to 90 degree north and south okay so upside 90 degree and downside 90 degree so plus 90 degree or minus 90 degree that is the idea behind latitude and uh, longitude is uh, your starting point that is with 0 degree and then you go with half circle that is semi circle and it is nothing but 180 degree so from east to west you consider 0 to 180 degree okay so this is the basic idea about latitudes and longitudes if you see the world map here uh, you will be able to see or locate these degrees okay you can see here uh, the arctic ocean or asia or north pacific ocean and these all thing and along with that you will have these degrees so the center line is equator 0 degree and then this is 20 degree then 40 degree north then 60 degree up to up to 90 degree and similarly uh, the below side so in this way uh, we have uh, this map which is constructed totally on the basis of this latitudes and longitudes okay 
सिद्धांत सर वेन आई ओके स्क्रीन इज नॉट कैन यू सी इट नाउ ओके वंस आई प्ले द वीडियो प्लीज टेल मी वेदर यू आर हैविंग सम आई मीन इट्स ऑडिबल और नॉट इज इट ऑडिबल इज इट ऑडिबल नो ओके जस्ट अ मिनट या फाइन ओके डू यू हैव एन आइडिया सर दैट हाउ कैन आई प्रोसीड फॉर ऑडियो प्रेजेंटेशन आई मीन आई एम प्लेइंग हियर वीडियो या ओके जस्ट अ मिनट जस्ट जस्ट अ मिनट पानन ओके सर Can you can you hear it now? Okay. Uh, fine. Okay, fine. I mean, even if it's visible, it will be uh, clear to you. Let me play it here. he says that earth is a sphere and hence we are having the coordinates in such kind of structure where we are going with north or south or east or west and it is represented with angles okay so, yeah so the equator is with 0 degree north pole is with 90 degree upside and any location can be in between we can go with it and similarly for southern hemisphere we can go in this way now you can see here in this uh, video 43 degree 5 minutes and 42.7 seconds okay north side so if you want to understand this thing yeah then how do we proceed for it yeah just a minute yeah so what we will do here Uh, we will divide this all thing by uh, 60 and then we will sum it up to get this value so you can see here in the first line and in the last line so these are the coordinates that we are using okay yeah so in this way you can see here the grid structure denoting these longitudes and latitudes so 0 degree line is the prime meridian north pole to south pole yeah the if this is 0 degree then opposite side is 180 degree okay and now line of latitudes they are parallel and tentative distance between these two lines are triple 1 kilometers but if you consider longitudes you will have a variable distance here when you consider 20 degrees north here you will have around 104 kilometers the distance between these two lines but when you go with 80 degrees north you will have 19 kilometers distance between these two lines so in this way you will see the difference between these coordinates okay now uh, let me tell you here just open your mobile uh, google map and try to locate this uh, i mean location yeah, it is given to you here 43 degree then 5 minutes and 42.7 seconds north and similarly for this so just do it here so that we will have a brief exercise that how do we understand these coordinates okay. so i will request all the participants here to use google map try to uh, enter this thing and let's see what you can lock it
Yes, any answer? Have you got the answer? Okay, fine. Uh, let me show you the result here. Okay, uh, first of all, see, you can see here the cross section point, okay, in the intersection point. Uh, you can see here you were given around 43 degree north and then some degrees in west. So basically, this is east and this is west, okay. So, if you see the intersection point of these two coordinates, it will be somewhere here in North America, okay. And it's nothing but uh, when you locate actually, it is nothing but uh, a museum here. Yeah, so you can see here, Nas National Mustard Museum. So, basically, uh, this was a small exercise when you are entering some coordinates in uh, google map for example then you are having a particular location okay so uh, it's not only that uh, let me show you one more thing uh, when you open your google maps okay you, uh, uh, it always show your current location am i right okay so uh, you can uh, long press on it on your location and you will have, uh, I mean, red pin over there. When you long press on it, you will have your own coordinates. Just try it out and tell me whether you are able to get your coordinates or not. Uh, open your Google Maps and long press your location. Okay, just make sure that you don't press on any known location. For example, uh, Riddhi Siddhi parlor is there. Then don't click over it because it's already recognized. Okay. So maybe just few a few feet apart from such known location, when you click on it and long press it, you will have an actual coordinates of yourself. Are you getting it? Okay. So uh, okay, anybody has got any uh, the coordinates? where you are sitting right now good okay so yeah this is the thing okay you can get your coordinates and these coordinates please keep in mind these are very important okay while somebody wants to track you or maybe if you are in trouble and if you want to share your location with any of your relatives maybe your brother and maybe your father then uh, you can just share these coordinates and these are quite important. It will give uh, your exit location to your near and dear ones. Okay. And uh, that is the thing. Even if you are sharing your location to WhatsApp, for example, then that WhatsApp is nothing but grabbing this thing, grabbing your coordinates on the basis of GPS functioning and then it uh, shares with others. Right. So basically that we have understood here. Now, uh, how do we uh, create such kind of coordinates? So basically, uh, we will not go into much detail about this thing, but you can see here on the screen, it's nothing but World Geodetic System, which was set up lastly in 1984. Earlier it was there in 60, 66 and 72, but at present we are following this system and it is also used in cartography, geodesy and satellite navigation, including GPS. Okay. So, uh, I mean, this is uh, one type of coordinate system, like you are already familiar with Cartesian coordinate system, okay. So, this is geodetic coordinate system. Here, you will have an idea that basically, Earth is not totally uh, spheroid, but it's oblate uh, spheroid. So, basically, we can have some ellipsoidal uh, structure that will give you more precise answer. And that is the reason that we are following this system and we will have an idea that uh, uh, those the system that you already studied and you are familiar with that is uh, spherical coordinates and you know that what is x is equal to r sin theta cos pi and something like that so these all coordinate system already you are familiar and a slight tweaking here that will give you the ellipsoidal transformation as well
तो बेसिकली दीज ऑल स्टैंडर्ड मैथमेटिकल थिंग दैट यू हैव स्टडीड इन योर ग्रेजुएशन लेवल दैट इज क्वाइट यूजफुल इवन वाइल सेटिंग अप द कोऑर्डिनेट्स इन रियल लाइफ ओके सो बेसिकली व्हाट इज जीपीएस एंड हु इन्वेंटेड ओके दैट इज द फर्स्ट थिंग दैट वी वन शुड नो अबाउट इट एंड हियर देयर इज वन ग्रेट थिंग यू कैन सी हियर फर्स्ट फ्यू लाइंस एलेक्जेंडर ग्रेहम बेल he did not invent the telephone and it was already proven in court uh, for 113 years after the original inventor antonio muki died okay so basically the other person was there who invented this thing but uh, whenever telephone comes into picture we think about alexander graham bell in the same way thomas edison okay basically he was humphry davy who showed that uh, first time that how light can be uh, cast by passing an electric current through a uh, platinum strip and similarly in the case of gps we have some kind of disputes here and but still uh, we have the panel here we can you can say a hall of fame where some of the eminent personalities uh, can be included uh, who have made a great contribution in gps okay so mainly there are four people here we will talk about the first is Roger L Easton basically he was a former head of naval research laboratories and uh, the uh, the space application branch uh, he was also a cold war scientist and um, made a, a very good workout for tracking satellites like he was tracking uh, soviet union's sputnik see sputnik was there and there was a i mean cold war between russia and us okay so this person was the key person he was tracking sputnik at that time and now you can imagine that how uh, i mean uh, genius he is okay and moreover he introduced the new concept called timation which basically utilized a uh, passive ranging circular orbits and space borne high precision clocks synchronized to a master clock so basically uh, if you say that your earth's clock and your satellite's clock if they are synchronized well together then definitely the position uh which you are getting that might be more accurate okay so this person was behind such kind of computations the second comes to picture is ivan getting now he was the founding president of the aerospace corporation and he was recognized by the american national academy of engineering and awarded a very well known um, prize called charles stark draper prize and that was uh, related to the concept and development of gps and now the same prize is also shared with uh, the third person that is called bradford parkinson he was uh, forefront of the navstar gps joint program between 1972 to 1978 moreover he was the chief architect of gps throughout the systems conception and engineering development and implementation see these all are very different thing the first person may be there for systems conceptual understanding the second person might be the engineering development the third person will be de dedicated to the implementation part but he was the key person in all such operations and that is the reason that he was given the title father of gps and he co received obviously the prize with the uh, ivan getting now the fourth is the lady dr gladys west in 1956 she started working at naval weapons laboratory same but another section at usa now uh, after that she worked in various laboratories and agencies and you can say that uh, it was kind of a spy uh, work she was doing at naval space surveillance center uh, where she has also contributed after that i mean some of the agencies were uh, merged and uh, got some another new name but you can see here she has made a very long journey since 1956 uh, till 2018 she was working with this air force space and uh, missile pioneers and something like that and so, so in this way um, i mean she came into picture in hall of fame and uh, she has extremely contributed here in this uh, case of finding the accurate yes yeah Oh sir, you told me late. Just a minute, sir. Oh, is it not full screen yet? Oh, 
Okay, can you see it now, sir? Uh, just a minute. Okay, can you see it, Roger L. Easton? Can you see this light? Number one person. Okay, okay. Uh, sorry for it. So, uh, okay, I mean, fine. So now you can see here. This this is the person, Roger L. Eastern. Okay. Uh, have you seen this this slide? Okay. The second person was Ivan Getting, and he got the Charles Stark Draper Prize. Okay, for the concept and development of GPS. The third person was uh, Bradford Parkinson. He co-received this prize with uh, the Ivan Getting, okay. And fourth is the lady, Dr. Gladys West, and she has made a very long journey since 1956. She was working with such kind of facility, and she has developed a very good accuracy here in finding geodetic earth model and optimization in GPS, okay. So I mean, these all four persons, these are key persons in inventing GPS, okay. So, we need to thank you all these four eminent personalities uh, based upon which we are right now working with our mobile and GPS kind of thing, okay. And uh, one interesting thing here is uh, such all nice inventions, they are coming out on the basis of mostly as a byproduct of war, either it is hot war or cold war, okay. So, uh, this is again uh, a very good pro byproduct uh, which gives us a precise location and and you see in mobile that is uh, I mean slight receiver they are uh, uh, maybe placed over there or maybe you are using internet but specially made GPS uh, devices are also there they are just tracking you at the moment okay where you are sitting or where you are going and uh, it gives you a precise and accurate location okay. Now, uh, now how GPS works, let's come into the mathematical part. So, I hope uh, so far whatever we have discussed, you have no doubt or difficulty in understanding there is no problem with anyone. Okay, are you through to it? Any doubt? Any questions? Okay, fine. So, I assume uh, whatever we have discussed that is clear to you and now we will start with the mathematical part. To begin with, uh, let's consider a simple 2D example. Suppose that there are three base stations A, B and C in uh, two dimensional space that is uh, R2, okay, that can send and receive signals from your mobile phone. Uh, we assume that uh, suppose base station A is located at point minus 1 comma minus 2, B at point 36 comma 5 and C at point 16 comma 35, okay. So basically these are three locations where uh, we are, our um, base stations are situated and uh, we also assume that our mobile phone location is at the point x comma y. So basically this is unknown, okay. Your current location is x comma y. But you know that where your base station A is located and similarly for B and C. This whole thing is just to have an idea that how these things work, okay. So if you understand this clearly, then even the more complex thing will be much more easier for you, okay. The, uh, you can see here in the next slide that this, this can be the figure of if you locate these coordinates A, B and C, okay. Then uh, with this A, B and C, you will have some triangular region, okay. And uh, you might be here uh, at any point of time, you may, uh, if you want to find your coordinates, then it will be looking like you are uh, with this region, okay. So now the next thing is based upon the time that it takes to receive the signals from these three base stations, it can be determined that when you are referring to your base station A, uh, the distance is around 28 kilometers, okay. So, this can be easily achieved 
when you have a device and suppose that base station is say for example it's one satellite and if it sends some signal then uh, based upon the distance uh, i mean based upon the time it takes and we know the uh, the uh, speed of light that is nearly 3 lakh kilometers per second so based upon this you can easily calculate the distance so we have calculated here that the base station a is far from uh, our location that is 28 kilometer similarly for base station b is 26 kilometer and say base station c is 14 kilometer okay now uh, there must be some limitation of the equipment that we are using okay so there may not be a hundred percent accuracy so uh, there might be some space for such kind of errors that may occur okay now the goal is uh, to determine your location in r2 based upon this information okay so it's quite simple let me introduce you uh, to the system of equations so basically uh, once you know that uh, you can cover this point i mean x y and within the circle if you consider the radius a bit higher than the largest distance so i have considered here say radius 29 then if you draw the circle with uh, radius 29 then uh, the whole thing will be there i mean your point x comma y definitely will be in that circle right now uh, the distance formula that already you have studied in 12th standard okay so normal distance formula that can give you this uh, square root of x plus 1 square plus y plus 2 square thing okay and you are referring the base station a already you know that this distance should be 28 kilometers right so you have got one equation here that square root of x plus uh, x plus 1 whole square plus y plus 2 whole square and you see here we are taking into account the error which is also generated on the basis of this machine or equipment and therefore i am adding that error here plus z and then i will have the output is 28 okay is it clear to you students is it clear to you okay so square root of x plus 1 square plus y plus 2 square plus z that is nothing but the error which is occurred due to equipment which led to the final answer 28 because we already know that the distance from your location to the base station a is 28 kilometers so it's already predefined so we have this equation now similarly you can uh, go with the same kind of computation for base station b and base station c so i have written here all these equations you can see and then you can uh, have the system of all these equations equation one two and three okay now let me ask you a simple question here how can you solve this system anyone from you yes Yes, anyone wants to say something? Okay, fine. Uh, so uh, basically, uh, at first moment, you, you see here that this system is quite simple, but when you see uh, in more depth, you are seeing these uh, quadratic terms comes into picture and basically it's not always true that you can solve such kind of systems very easily and there the idea of linear algebra comes into picture okay uh, first of all uh, since apparently this system is nothing but a system of non-linear equations now my first target is to make this system linear okay so coming from non-linear to linear i have some of the uh, ways to work out Okay, before we go into that, uh, we just need to keep in mind that to solve the nonlinear system is not always easy. And another thing is that when I try to draw the circle, say for example, circle uh, with uh, 29 radius, so you can see a red one. And similarly, other uh, radial circles are there for these respective base stations at center. So when you see here, you can see that basically you have not um, I mean actual 
point of intersection here but you have some common region okay and since you can see here that the, these three circles are not coinciding into one point that is the reason that you are having that discrepancy that z term you you remember that z term that z term comes into picture because of that error you are not having these circles which are giving you a exact point okay point of intersection of these three circles if you are having a single point then that must be your precise location okay so now we need to rectify this error okay so how do we rectify this now there are various options the simplest option over here is if you just see here equation 1 and 2 okay so uh, from uh, you can see here uh, you can use equation 1 and 2 if you take subtraction on corresponding sides and then uh, take uh, brackets open then you will have uh, the expressions uh, like this I mean the first expression will be this one 37x plus 7y plus 2z is equal to 712 okay and now we have made our nonlinear system linearized one okay so basically we have implemented here the linearization process okay and now see on, on the basis of equation 1 and 2 I could found one equation which is quite nice 37x plus 7y plus 2z is equal to 712 and this is very simple calculation okay you can do by hand as well in the same way use equation 2 and equation 3 okay let me just show you again equation 2 and equation 3 and take the difference of these corresponding sides and then simplify it and you will have another e equation that is 17x plus 37y plus 14z is equal to 1032. So now you have the system and you can solve this system. Okay. Um, now, but you cannot have a, a complete solution because you have only two equations and three unknowns. Okay. So basically some dependency is there. Now, uh, one more thing I would like to introduce here is uh, that's the concept of pseudo inverse of the coefficient matrix of the system if you want to find the solution now how do we find pseudo inverse it's a different story it's uh, basically a matrix theory okay you need to cope up with transpose of a matrix and then multiply it with the original matrix and you will have a square matrix and then take inverse and then multiply with transpose something like that so you will get pseudo inverse once you get the pseudo inverse of that matrix you can simply substitute here say for example uh, x is equal to uh, a inverse b so you can have that pseudo inverse multiply with your right hand side matrix that is 712 and 1032 okay and simplify to get the answer so isn't it very good method to understand gps for two dimensional structure yes or no okay uh, a very simple thing we considered base stations and then a simple coordinates and then you need to find your own coordinates x comma y and in fact you can go with the error part as well okay later on but this was just a brief demonstration that how we are using our location theory here on the basis of linear algebra that we have learned so far okay now uh, let's come to the more realistic picture okay uh, when you have an actual satellite or GPS satellite when you receive a signal into your device okay now uh, let me consider here uh, a few number of satellites okay the first of all uh, how do we have this information basically the transmission from satellite say for example I number of satellite is there it provides four pieces of information a location that is XI YI ZI see now you have X Y and Z that is height okay and a timestamp okay when that signal was sent when it is it has been received by the user okay so timestamp is also important so basically now you you see that you you work with four dimensional structure x y z and t okay okay so some people they are just quite, quite curious that how do we use here relativity okay so this is an idea that you can use here relativity because of this thing x y z and t okay and it's basically related with satellites atomic clock so once you have that clock which is very accurate you will get a very accurate location because time also specifies significant role in locating you okay please keep in mind now the timestamp allows this calculation of the distance between you and this ith satellite the transmission 
travel time is calculated by the subtraction of the current time on the GPS receiver from the satellite's timestamp. Satellite, when it sends you the signal, it basically gives you a timestamp. For example, at 10 a.m. and 23 seconds, it sent you some signal and you received the signal at 10 a.m. and 25 seconds. So basically, this two seconds gap and we know the speed of light. So on the basis of these two seconds and the actual value of the speed of light, you can say that uh, how much far you are from that particular satellite. So it's a simple thing. So, uh, so this distance can be found in this way, C times T A minus T. Fine. Now, this signal places your location within a sphere of that radius from the center of the satellite. Okay. Basically, if you receive a signal at the same time from two satellites, then you will have this kind of uh, an intersection region of these two spheres. You can see in this figure or uh, you know that when you consider an intersection of two spheres, you will get circle, okay, as your main region, I mean the output. Okay, so intersection region here is a circle. Now, when you increase the number of satellites here, so if you get simultaneous signals from three different satellites, okay, when you have three different satellites, you have uh, virtual three spheres, and now your position gets narrowed down to two points. You can see here the intersection. Say for example, the be below two circles, then the, I mean below two spheres and then the region is this circle. Similarly, for these two spheres, the region is this one. And for other two spheres, this is the region. So basically, inter if you consider intersection of these all circles, you will get only two points. Now see, the idea is quite simple when you move from 2D to 3D and when you move from number of satellites like number one satellite then two then three and if you increase the number of satellites which are communicating to you you are having a very accurate position got it so in this way your location would be exactly determined okay when you are working with such kind of things so here now the problem is uh, the calculating the distance or I mean distances are determined by the time it takes for the signal to travel that already we discussed okay but uh, what are the pseudo ranges that come into picture here the reason behind this I mean uh, in simple language I can say that uh, some errors are occurring here also and there might be n number of reasons the first reason here that when your signal travels it can change the signals move through the ionosphere and then troposphere and then it comes to you okay so if there is some disturbances then definitely you are not having an actual position okay so that may vary so we need to obviously incorporate this error term here okay and uh, to incorporate this thing we will have a simple formula here on left hand side you have uh, uh, satellite if you have assumed which is position at x1 y1 and z1 and if you are considering a distance d1 then uh, from the gps receiver located at point x comma y comma z then the distance formula will give you this one square root of x minus x1 square plus y minus y1 square plus z minus z1 square is equal to c times t1 minus d that already we have discussed okay so basically uh, this is the formula carried out for the first satellite Similarly, you can consider the remaining formula from other satellites. So, if you consider four satellites at a time, you will have uh, this system of four equations, okay? And there, you have these four parameters, x, y, z, t, and obviously, the fifth one, that is the error, d, okay? Now, uh, based upon the previous procedure that we did in 2D case, you, you, you go with the same kind of thing to linearize these equations, okay? If you simplify it, I, I just written here one equation and this is the equation which basically gives you uh, some idea that how to approach for the further solution. You got this equation from the uses of first and second equation for those four satellite equations and in the same way you can have the second equation, third equation and then simplify it because this is the linear system. See x2 and x1 are already known to you. So, 2 times x2 minus x1 is some value, for example, 5. So, it is nothing but 5x. Similarly, for example, this is 7. So, 5x plus 7y plus something into z and this whole thing is constant. And similarly here, only d part is there. Okay. 
So basically you have a very plain system of linear equations. You just need to solve it out. Okay, now there are two ways. Okay, you can directly solve such systems or you may have an idea about finding the best fit or the least square solution. Okay, the reason behind this is because of that error. That error occurred due to uh, maybe some atmospheric effect or maybe on the basis of the discrepancy in the equipment itself or maybe anything else okay and that is the reason that we cannot get we cannot get directly the actual solution because of this uh, degeneracy of 100% accuracy okay and that is the reason that we need to go up with some approximate solution now what do we do if we don't know about any numerical methods to solve it out then idea is quite simple just have an approach of least squares method okay so least squares method basically gives you a best fitting or the nearest solution to the actual one okay and we are familiar with least squares approximation method as well so just apply that method to these equations and you are done okay so basically we we can say that this basic linear algebraic concepts they are tremendously tremendously useful in working out this accurate location of tracking through GPS. So I hope you have enjoyed this lecture. With this, I am concluding my talk. And uh, uh, maybe in future, you might have now an idea that how this kind of things occur. And basically, it works on the basis of simple mathematical principle. Thank you, everyone. Welcome, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to interact with your students. Thanks, man.